briefing of the Senate Committee fin of finan on Finance to Order. We'd like to acknowledge uh, our members who are online. Our Vice Chairperson, Senator Amy Marcos. Good morning, ma'am. And from we will be hearing briefings from the Judiciary Your Honors. And this, of course, we have with us the Supreme Court. Uh, we have with us Associate Justice Ordil Zalameda. Morning, sir. Associate Justice Josep Lopez. Morning, sir. <coughs> of course, always every year, Court Administrator Jose Maidas Marquez. Morning, sir. Deputy Court Administrator Raul Villanueva. Morning. And uh, Clerk of Court, Attorney Cuevas, Attorney Esteban Garcia, Attorney Yulion, Attorney Ferrer Flores, Ms. Selena Jacinto, Ms. Melissa Muhi, and COA Rep. Mariflor Tubana. Good morning to all of you from the Supreme Court. Uh, from the Court of Appeals, we have with us Presiding Justice Remedio Salazar Fernando, Associate Justice Edwin Sorongon. Good morning, Your Honors. And Chief Judicial Staff Officer, Ms. Virgin Virginia Vela Cruz. Good morning po to the, the officials from the Court of Appeals. Sa Sandigan Bayan Ho, we have Associate Justice Carl Miranda uh, from the court. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, and we are awaiting from the Court of Tax Appeals their uh, representatives. So uh, we'll begin with the usual procedures by asking the different uh, agencies, uh, in this case, the different courts, to present their uh, uh, budget highlights for 2022. Again, thank you for attending. We welcome uh, your honors to this uh, briefing of the, the uh, Senate Committee on Finance. Good morning, Po. Uh, we'll turn it over to the Supreme Court, uh, who will be speaking. See, Court, court Adbao, ang magkasalita. Uh, yes, Mr. Senator, uh, the court administrator will be the one to present uh, the budget for the entire judiciary. Yes. Okay. We'll turn it over to you, uh, Court Administrator uh, Jose Maidas Marquez. Thank you, sir. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Sani Angara. Uh, magandang umaga po at uh, magandang umaga rin po kay Senator uh, Amy Marcos. And doon po sa mga kasamahan ko sa judiciary, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, let me skip... Uh, calling or recognizing everyone as uh, you have already uh, uh, um, mentioned their names. Um, we have also uh, invited the presiding justices of uh, uh, Sandigan Bayan and Court of Tax Appeals. Baka nahirapan lang po magpumasok. Uh, but uh, we are, uh, we are um, almost certain that uh, they will be joining us. So <clears throat> uh, let me proceed, Your Honors, uh, with the um, highlights of the Judiciary budget for uh, 2022. Okay, uh, um, <clears throat> before we go to those highlights. Uh, okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, thanks, bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye. Yes, uh, uh, we'd thanks, like to acknowledge thanks. Senator Tolentino, a member of the committee. But uh, we'd ask, uh, may we ask our uh, resource persons to mute their microphones, uh, except for the one speaking, Your Honors. Thank you. Uh, magandang umaga rin po kay uh, Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. <coughs> uh, uh, let me now uh, proceed with our uh, with the highlights no, of uh, our uh, proposed 2022 uh, budget for the entire judiciary. Uh, just um, a brief background. For, for the current year, 2021, uh, the entire judiciary was given... 45.31 billion. Uh, and then we were proposing 67.8, 67.28 billion for 2022. However, the 20, 2022 NEP uh, uh, proposed by, uh, by DBM only gives the judiciary um, 44. Uh, can we please uh, move? Uh, uh, no, next uh, slide, please. There. Okay. So, <clears throat> in, in this slide, we will see you know, that uh, for the 2021 budget, the entire judiciary received 45.31 billion. And then we were proposing for 2022, 67.28 billion. However, the DBM is just giving 44.98 billion. That means... That's actually, uh, there's actually a, a variance huh? from our proposed 2022 of 67.28 to 
to what is be being given by DBM of uh, 44.98, there's a variance of 22.3 billion. No? But what is more, what, what's equally telling, uh, Your Honors, I think, is that uh, the proposed DBM uh, budget for the judiciary is lower than the current 2021 budget of the judiciary. No? Uh, DBM is proposing for 2022 44.98 while we have already 45.31. It's supposed to be 45.31 no, for 2021, not 45.13. So um, it is lower, and this is actually uh, in violation of the uh, Constitution, uh, specifically Section 3 of Article 8, no, where the judiciary cannot, uh, where the budget of the judiciary cannot be lower than the previous year. No? <clears throat> so... Uh, as I've said, no, there's a variance of 22.3 billion um, between our proposed 2022 budget and the 2022 uh, budget being proposed by the DBM. No? Now, next slide, please. Uh, the variance is here now for the Supreme Court and the lower courts, 16.88, uh, 16.89 billion. For the Presidential Electoral Tribunal, 53.28 million. For the Court of Appeals, 4.01 billion. For Sandigan Bayan, 1.7, 1.07 billion. And for the Court of Tax Appeals, 275.82 million. So next slide, please. Uh, okay, that, uh, that totals the variance to 22.3 no? and... Uh, but what we are requesting out of the 22.3 is just 7.47 billion. So we are requesting Congress, Your Honors, if uh, 7.47 billion out of the 22.3 billion be given back or be given to the judiciary in addition to the 44.98 billion being recommended by the DBM. Uh, of course, if uh, 7.47 billion will be added to the 44.98 billion being given by the DBM, then uh, there will no there, uh, there will be no more uh, constitutional uh, <clears throat> uh, violation no? because uh, if we add 7.47 billion to 44.98, that will now be higher than the current. Thirty-one billion that we have. No? So uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the seven point forty-seven billion actually is comprised of <clears throat> uh, for the supreme for the supreme court and the lower courts forty-four point three four point thirty-eight billion for the presidential electoral tribunal. 16.56 million for the Court of Appeals, 2.01 billion for the Sandigan Bayan, 834.46 million, and the Court of Tax Appeals, 231.15 million. Uh, briefly, Your Honors, uh, if I may, uh, just uh, <clears throat> just uh, what what comprises this uh, the MR that we are uh, requesting? No? Uh, next slide, please. For uh, uh, for the Supreme Court and the lower courts, that's 4.38 billion. No? So included here will be some of the well, will be some of the newly created positions. Your Honours, uh, if I may, uh, the, the Supreme Court recently created the Judicial uh, Integrity Board, no? uh, and this is composed of uh, retired uh, justices of the Supreme Court and the uh, appellate collegiate, co collegiate court. No? Uh, the Judicial Integrity Board will, um, <clears throat> will now... Um, uh, uh, the Judicial Integrity Board will be the one no? to uh, look at, study the admin cases, no? evaluate the ad uh, administrative cases filed against justices of the Court of Appeals, Sandigan Bayan CTA, and judges of the first and second level courts and the court personnel. And the board will be the one to uh, recommend to the Supreme Court uh, <clears throat> if ever some, if ever uh, sanctions will have to be imposed 
against airing uh, judiciary uh, justices, judges, and employees of the of the judiciary. No? We also have uh, um, new new cre uh, new positions no? for the lower courts, our uh, family courts. Uh, we have seven seven hundred eighty two positions for fifty six family courts, no? and these family courts is by virtue of our Republic Act uh, <clears throat> creating the family courts. I think of a uh, uh, family court Eight, acts of uh, um, 1997, uh, <clears throat> RA 8365. <clears throat> and then um, we also have a lump sum for uh, creation of new positions uh, for our uh, judges at large. And then um, the hazard pay, which was uh, inserted actually by this uh, chamber, the Senate, uh, last year. Again, it was not included, no? hazard pay for our judges, no? including judges at large, and the Magna Carta for public social workers. No? And then um, communication expenses for our, uh, for our, particularly our first and second level courts. Uh, Your Honor, uh, at the start of the pandemic, we were able to uh, let our courts function, even if they were physically closed by virtue of vi uh, video conferencing hearings. No? And I am uh, very pleased to, <clears throat> to inform your honors that from uh, May 4, 2020 to September 17, 2021, uh, there are around 516,000 uh, video conferencing hearings uh, conducted by our courts nationwide with a success rate of 87%. And we were able to do this because we were able to provide our courts with uh, 365 platforms. No? And uh, we will need communication expenses because for 2022, we will have to uh, uh, purchase licenses no? for us to be able to continue with our video conferencing hearings nationwide. No? Uh, <clears throat> we also, uh, this uh, 4.38 billion also uh, includes uh, repairs and maintenance of buildings and rent and lease expenses. Uh, in the last uh, two years or three years, there have been a number of uh, newly created courts. No? And that's why we have to give our newly created courts uh, physical offices. No? Uh, <clears throat> and then, um, Yes, um, uh, that's a summary of uh, for our Supreme Court and first level uh, and uh, lower courts. We now go to the Presidential Electoral Tribunal. No? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Uh, next, please. Next slide, please. <clears throat> there, uh, Presidential Electoral Tribunal. Your Honors, we're asking for sixteen point fifty six million. No. Uh, this will um, <clears throat> uh, this will be spent for office supplies, communication expenses, transportation, and delivery expenses. Uh, of course, Your Honor, 2022 is a national election year, no? So uh, we are uh, we have to be ready for some uh, protests that will be filed by uh, the candidates, no? So for uh, next slide, please, for uh, Court of Appeals. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, for the Court of Appeals, we are requesting for uh, 2.01 billion. No? Uh, again, uh, this will uh, <clears throat> comprise uh, personal services. Uh, we have a contractual and casual personnel. Uh, <clears throat> and then longevity pay, uh, overtime pay. Uh, we also have a uh, maintenance and other operating expenses, uh, rent expenses, so including rent expenses. Uh, we, we continue to uh, rent our uh, pay rent no, for uh, our Court of Appeals in uh, Cebu City and Cagayan de Oro. No? Uh, we are in the process actually of uh, building judicial complexes no, in Cagayan de Oro and Cebu City. We are uh, in the initial stages. Um, um, for for Court of Appeal Cebu City, we are already uh, um, negotiating with uh, 
the consultant for uh, the detailed engineering and architectural design. Um, in Cagayan de Oro, likewise, except that uh, we are just encountering uh, minor uh, hindrances and concerns. No? But uh, we are in the process of building, as I've said, our judicial complexes in Cebu City and Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, that will house both the first and second level courts and the Court of Appeals no? in those two areas. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the Court of Appeals will have to continue paying rent no? for their uh, offices in Cagayan de Oro and Cebu City. Uh, let's go to Sandigan Bayan, please. Uh, next slide. Uh, there. Sandigan Bayan, we're requesting for 834.46 million. Uh, again, we also... We also have a, a new positions in Sandigan Bayan, and the other positions are being upgraded. Uh, hazard pay, uh, we're also requesting for hazard pay. For maintenance and other operating expenses, um, we have to repair and maintain uh, the, our uh, building uh, in uh, buildings in Sandigan Bayan, Quezon City. And uh, in fact, we have to retrofit no? the Sandigan Bayan Centennial Building. So that will all total to additional of. Uh, 834.46 million. Uh, next slide, please. For the Court of Acts Appeals, we are requesting for 231.15 million. Again, lump sum for creation of new positions, uh, for upgrading and conversion of positions, uh, reclassification and upgrading of positions, and for additional supplies, materials, including oil, uh, fuel. No? for the transportation. <clears throat> uh, that totals an additional of 231.15 million. No? For court of... Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, let's go now to the special provisions. No? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. We are actually requesting, no? again, uh, for the rewording of two special provisions. No? Uh, this request has been repeatedly... Uh, asked and granted since 2013 as uh, special provision number two, uh, which says, uh, as, as per NEP, uh, it says here that the um, special allowance of justices and judges shall cease to be granted. No? However, uh, <clears throat> we are uh, proposing a rewording, no? as I've said, since 2013, and this has always been granted anyway so that the SADS will continue to be granted as provided in a 2011 uh, Supreme Court resolution. No? Anyway, the uh, special allowance uh, for judge, justices and judges uh, is fully funded no? by, uh, by our filing fees. No? And then for special provision number seven, the next. Uh, okay. Here... Um, the NEP uh, actually specifies no, the, the amounts that will be uh, uh, will be uh, given um, to the RTs, to the courts, no, to the first and second level courts. No? But our uh, proposed rewarding no, <clears throat> is so that the Supreme Court will be um, able to equally, equ equitably allocate. No? So we're uh, we're not we're. Uh, we're requesting that the spe uh, specified amounts no? um, uh, uh, be, uh, be uh, <clears throat> not be indicated, and instead that the court, the Supreme Court, no, be given that flexibility to equitably allocate uh, the maintenance and other operating expenses for the lower courts. No? Uh, those are those are uh, the the requests of the entire judiciary, Your Honors. Um, the, 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 the remaining slides no, actually uh, talk about our structure, our uh, um, the, the, the caseloads, the manpower complement, no? and uh, with, with, uh, with the permission of uh, Mr. Chair uh, and uh, the other members of the Senate uh, be with us uh, this morning, uh, I can just... Uh, uh, Go over the slides no? in uh, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, other members of the Senate. Uh, yes, there's an echo. Uh, could the other resource persons please turn off their uh, microphone?
microphones, please, except for the resource person speaking. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Court Ad. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as, as I've said, no, uh, those are our the requests of the Philippine judiciary. Uh, the other slides actually just uh, um, um, speak of uh, the uh, judiciary structure, the manpower complement, uh, the caseloads of the judiciary, and uh, with your uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair and the other members of uh, the Senate of the members of the Finance Committee, I can just uh, re uh, go to those slides if there are questions uh, from uh, your honors. <clears throat> Yes, uh, that's that. That would be fine, uh, Court Administrator Marquez. Thank you. Uh, before I recognize the uh, Court of Appeals uh, presiding justice, I'd like to mention for the record, since uh, the judiciary uh, changes personnel, although Court Administrator Marquez and Deputy Court Administrator Villanueva have been presenting to us for the last few years, for 2021, the 2021 budget, the National Expenditure Program or NEP submitted by the DBM or the Office of the President was 42.3 billion approximately. But uh, when it left the halls of Congress, particularly the Senate, it was higher by 1.765 billion pesos for a total of 44.109 billion pesos, uh, which is the 2021. Uh, budget for the judiciary. So an increase of 1.765. Just to uh, place on record the support of this chamber, uh, particularly this committee and this representation for the budget of the judiciary and the different courts. Uh, thank you. We'd like to recognize, and for 2020, there was also a similar, if not higher, increase, if I'm not mistaken. No? Although because of COVID, baka na, na bayanihan yun, na, na cash sweep, uh, for uh, dun sa ayuda, as happened to many agencies. No? So now we'll turn it, if it's all right, with the any remarks from our Supreme Court justices before we turn it over to our Court of Appeals. I uh, Court Ad, would any of the Supreme Court justices wish to address the committee? If not, we can proceed to the Court of Appeals already. Uh, well, uh, uh can, can I ask uh, the Supreme Court, any of the Supreme Court justices, if they would like to uh, address uh, the committee? Uh, yep. Maybe, uh, Senator, I think uh, Court Administrator Maidas Marquez has already sufficiently explained our position on the matter. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. And uh, we'd like to acknowledge also Court of Tax Appeals presiding presence of Court of Tax Appeals CTA presiding Justice Roman del Rosario. Welcome, good morning, sir. Uh, so now we'll turn it over. Uh, to the Court of Appeals, and as, as mentioned earlier, we have with us Presiding Justice Remedio Salazar Fernando and Associate Justice Edwin Sorongon. Good morning, Your Honors. You have the floor, Po. Uh, good morning, Your Honors and other members of uh, the Senate. Good morning from uh, uh, to uh, Justice Lopez and Justice Alameda and all the members of the Finance Group to, uh, uh, to Oka Maidas Marquez. Uh, the Court of Appeals would just like to reiterate the request of uh, Oka Maidas Marquez for the continued support for the Court of Appeals. The figures were already stated by uh, uh, Justice Maidas, and uh, we would like to reiterate that the Court of Appeals is really pleading for more support because for MOOE, we were not given any adjustment or any increase or decrease. At, uh, we are at a dilemma because for our rentals alone for Cebu and Cagayan de Oro, since we don't have any building yet, the rental for next year is almost triple our current, our current rentals for Cebu and Cagayan de Oro. Likewise, we have our replacement a project for all the equipments and other computers and the uh, vehicles, and we were not given such uh, uh, any amount for uh, the capital outlay for those projects. So, Mr. Senator, uh, the Court of Appeals is uh, reiterating our plea for the usual support for the CA and the entire judiciary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, Presiding Justice. 
Kabutahe Tang, and of course, uh, you can rely, I think, on the on this committee and this chamber to uh, augment your, your budget as with the other courts. Uh, can we now hear from the Sandigan Bayan? Oh, this is, uh, I think we have with us Associate Justice Carl Miranda. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, good, good, good morning, uh, Senator Angara. Uh, thank you for uh, hearing us, uh, our budget at this time. Your Honors, despite being the third branch of government, the judiciary has received a minuscule 1.007% of uh, last year's national budget. The Constitution, Section 3 of Article 8 in particular, mandates that appropriations for the judiciary may not be reduced by the legislature below the amount appropriated for the previous year. And yet, Your Honors, the DBM, year in and year out, recommends a budget much lower than what the judiciary desperately needs. A budget lower than what Congress appropriated the year before. Your Honors, if the judiciary is to be able to perform its mandate to deliver swift and fair administration of justice, this injustice needs to be corrected. We thank Congress, the Senate in particular, for supporting through the years the request of the judiciary or for the budget that it desperately needs. Thank you very much. Now, uh, as far as the Sandigan budget, let's reiterate our request for reconsideration for personal services. It is 320 million 467,000. For maintenance and other operating expenses, it is 13,994,000. And for capital outlay, for the retrofitting of the Sandigan Bayan Centennial Building, 500 million. Uh, for the total amount of 834,461. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of Presiding Justice uh, Abaro Kabotahe Tang. Is, uh, if she would like to uh, say anything uh, in support of their budget, she's welcome also. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, morning, ho, Justice. Yes, uh, Justice Carl Miranda has already uh, more than ably expressed the uh, the quest of the Sandigan Bayan. And may I just reiterate, Your Honors, uh, that uh, our request for reconsideration be uh, seriously considered and hopefully granted by the uh, by uh, the Congress. And again, thank you very much, Your Honors, for your continuing support to the Sandigan Bayan. Thank, thank you. you, Presiding Justice Kabutai Tang. Uh, again, for the record, we thank uh, Justice Miranda for his kind uh, remarks about uh, Congress, and we really have uh, endeavored to give flesh to these constitutional mandates and to give uh, justice, <laughs> so to speak, to the budget of the judiciary and the separate courts and the different courts. And we thank him for his gracious remarks. And for the record, the 2021 net of the Sandigan Bayan was 928 uh, million approximately. And when it left this chamber, it uh, was already at 1.278 billion, uh, an, an increase or a Senate amendment of 350 million pesos. Uh, just for the information, again, for the body, for those who were not around last year, uh, which again shows the support of the chamber, this committee, uh, as well as my personal support for the courts of the Republic. So uh, now we'll turn it over to Court of Tax Appeals, Presiding Justice uh, Roman Del Rosario. Sir, uh, you have the floor to present your budget for 2022. Good morning, Good morning po, Senator Angara. Can I be heard? Yes, yes, we can hear you, sir. Um, and of course, good morning to Supreme Court Justices Salameda and uh, Lopez. And of course, uh, good morning, uh, Court Ad Maidas. It's good to see that you're always uh, in the mood to present our budget. <laughs> so, uh, 
Senator, we have uh, pleaded in the past. We have appealed before you in the past. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank you so sincerely for all the efforts and uh, the assistance you have been extending to the Court of Tax Appeal. In fact, today, I also make the same appeal that our motion for reconsideration be seriously considered. Your Honor, despite the lockdown in our courts, I am proud to say that for the entire year of uh, uh, 2020, we have a, uh, a clearance rate of uh, 131%. It means, Your Honor, that the number of cases that uh, we receive as against the number of cases we are able to dispose is much lower. The disposition, in other words, is much higher than the number of cases that uh, are entering the court. And uh, despite the lockdown, Your Honors, uh, I would like to say that uh, most of the senior officials in my court are always present and attending to the necessities and the requirements of the court. We have pleaded, Your Honor, for the amount of uh, 231 million that is incorporated in our motion for reconsideration, despite the fact that the deduction of the proposed budget of the CTA uh, goes in the amount of 275 million. If uh, we will be given this opportunity to increase our budget, we will be able to address, at the very least, these um, special necessities of the personnel, including the creation of our new positions, which is under the law, the creation of a procurement management division. That is very vital in any organization, Your Honor, precisely because procurement is a very sensitive activity. At, uh, in the same way, Your Honor, we need computers. Our computers are 10 years and even older. We need to make certain uh, replacements of our equipment. Your Honor, the other uh, items have already been extensively discussed by our court administrator, uh, by us. And I hope, Your Honor, our plea could be considered seriously. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Presiding Justice Del Rosario of the Court of Tax Appeals. Uh, of course, uh, I say this to not only to you, sir, but to all the members of the judiciary that we will give your appeals the strongest consideration, uh, given the meritorious nature and, of course, given uh, the institutional support uh, which uh, your position demands. Uh, anything else from the judiciary before we turn it over to our uh, members for their questions? Uh, Court Ad uh, Maidas, any anything else or pwede nang... uh, pwede na po, Your Honor. Okay, na okay. Po. Pwede na po. Thank, Thank you. you. Po. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, is uh, Vice Chair Amy Marcos online? Because she was first in line. Uh, I'll give the floor to Senator Francis Tolentino. Morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning to our uh, justices present. Uh, I am in full support of uh, the retention or the increase of the budget of the entire judiciary in compliance with Section 3, Article 8 of the Constitution. And I'd like to thank specifically the Supreme Court uh, with the issuance of that circular relative to the use of uh, body cameras that uh, should be used by police officers in in uh, implementing arrest and in search the use of uh, body cameras in uh, searching premises uh, that's a very positive sign that we are in compliance with with all our international commitments relative to uh, international human rights governance so we congratulate the judiciary for that Likewise, we, I, this is a policy question, uh, can be directed to uh, Justice Maidas or uh, the Chief Justice, the recent decision that the top 10 top notchers would no longer be announced. So just a, a quick departure from tradition, and perhaps uh, my, with all due respect, my classmate, the Chief Justice, can can explain this later. But I, this is just a policy question. But my my question would really uh, be related to 
several, with all due respect, to several unfilled positions. Okay. And my, if my records would be correct, there are 12,333, or equivalent to 31.35% unfilled positions in the entire judiciary. Is this correct, uh, Justice Fidas? Na ganun kalaki. Although the Supreme Court, the, the presentation you made a while ago was only 962. Is this correct? Uh, a number. Your Honor, uh, yes, uh, there, there, uh, there was an increase in the in the unfilled positions for uh, the court personnel. No, uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is because of uh, the recent uh, well, uh, what we are ex the, the current pandemic that we are experiencing. No. Um, it's it's not very easy to to process all these uh, all these uh, applications for uh, unfilled positions in the in the lower courts, no, uh, because uh, many of these uh, requirements and these are all uh, required by uh, the civil service. Hard copies of these requirements uh, have to be mailed from uh, far flung areas, no, from uh, from uh, uh, up north Abra and down south in. Uh, in Holo, no, uh, and uh, we are experiencing uh, difficulty, and that's why actually uh, we are uh, um, doing some um, uh, <clears throat> remedial measures, no, uh, like let's say requiring first um, uh, soft copies so that they can be electronically uh, transmitted to the Supreme Court. However, while we process all these applications, is until we get the hard copies, no. Uh, but just the same, Your Honor, um, uh, our uh, uh, selection and promotions board continue to meet uh, every Monday. No, even uh, even during the pandemic, uh, they meet online to process all these uh, uh, vacancies. No, but I'm uh, happy to note, Your Honor, uh, with regard uh, the first and second uh, level court judges. Um, in 2018, there was a vacancy rate of 31 no? percent. In 2019, this was decreased to 26%. Uh, by the end of 2020, uh, we only have 19% vacancies in our first and second le uh, level court judges. <clears throat> so, so it would mean, uh, Your Honor, that there are efforts currently uh, being done to fill up uh, the, the unfilled positions or would it uh, remain at that status uh, even uh, post-pandemic. So the, the, the related question would be what would happen to this, to the funds uh, appropriated, but the same, would it be savings or, because I heard, I heard a lot of newly created positions for fiscal year 2022. So what is the policy direction of the court relative to this? Uh, Your Honor, thank you for that question. Uh, the, the filling up of these vacancies, actually, Your Honor, is a continuing process. No? As I've said, uh, every Monday uh, morning, our selections and promotions board meet. No? Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, even for uh, uh, vacancies no, that, uh, let's say, uh, that would require uh, um, requirements, let's say, uh, for the scenographers, wherein uh, one year, two years uh, experiences are required, uh, we have uh, we have uh, we are getting contractual uh, court stenographers no? so that uh, we can uh, have uh, stenographers in our courts while uh, our permanent stenographers try to qualify no? because of the requirements needed. No? So it's really a continuing uh, process, Your Honor. Uh, there is no policy to to stop hiring because actually we uh, we need. Uh, uh, more court personnel for our courts uh, nationwide, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, last two minor administrative questions. Uh, this is reference to my my inclination, my continuing inclination. The same is true with the chairman uh, of supporting the Bangsamoro uh, region. It appears from, from the records I have here that the Shiaria courts, they have the lowest disposition rate of cases. Uh, just 15% for 2020 and their efforts to, to really capacitate the, the Sharia courts and, and 
how, how do we increase this uh, the, the disposition rate of cases at Justice Midas? How, we, how do we assist them? Well, uh, yes, Your Honor, um, we have a continuing uh, judicial education for our uh, judges of the Sharia courts, so, uh, including, of course, our uh, regular judges and the, and the different courts, uh, which are specially designated uh, for uh, special um, fields. No? Um, we, we, we are also, uh, we are continually, continuously also monitoring uh, the caseloads of our uh, Sharia courts no? so that uh, we can uh, determine uh, what, what, uh, what kind of assistance our Sharia courts would need. No? Um, <clears throat> and, um, well, yes, uh, there, there, may, there are actually uh, some vacancies also no? in our uh, Sharia courts. Um, <clears throat> and that, uh, but uh, as I've said, we continue to monitor the caseload so that we can determine if uh, there is some um, uh, Sharia courts needed more in, in some areas. No? Uh, but uh, we will, uh, of course, have to depend on the cases uh, being filed in those courts. No? For us to be able to, uh, for us to uh, increase the number of judges uh, in those areas, no, if needed. <clears throat> Thank you, Justice, uh, Mr. Chairman, I I really I really support the previous statements made a while ago that there is a need to increase, if not retain, the original uh, NAP proposal for the judiciary, considering that. This is not just provided for under the Constitution, but the workload, caseload of the judiciary uh, requires that they have a bigger chunk of the national budget. My unanswered question, Justice Maitas, has something to do with the policy question as to the uh, non-mentioning of the bar, top 10 bar uh, raisers uh, for this year. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, uh that was uh, deliberated upon no, by uh, by the members of the court and back. Uh, uh, and that's why, uh, well, um, after uh, <clears throat> they were, I think uh, uh, it was mentioned that um, um, that uh, putting uh, uh, the, 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 the main reason why we have uh, bar exams no, is to test uh, the examinee's uh, knowledge of uh, the laws no? and, the con and our constitution. And um, it is not really uh, for, for the, the examinees to, to uh, compete against each other. And that is why I think uh, that was the main reason why uh, um, uh, the top 10 was done away with. No? But of course... Uh, there will still be a top ten, except that it will it will no longer be uh, officially announced. No? Uh, so I think uh, uh, the bar takers, the bar passers, can still uh, ask the court no? uh, what their rate, uh, their grades are, and where they rated, no? how they rated from among those who uh, took the bar. <clears throat> Thank you, Justice, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have no further questions. Uh, Maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Senator Francis Tolentino. Look forward to, this is just a dream, a wish list. I look forward to decisions emanating from the High Tribunal that that would explain the very complicated IATF issuances uh, relative to individual freedoms, freedom of uh, relig the religious worship, and the current educational uh, situation we have right now as we move forward uh, post-pandemic stage. So it will help clarify uh, amongst the people all this apparently conflicting, uh, confusing uh, issuances in this time of national emergency when the use of police power would perhaps conflict with individual rights and liberties, but that, that's just a, a dream for me. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. If there is no movement here. If there's Senator Ayumi Marcos will not be around, and I will be uh, going to another committee hearing, uh, county's representation as a movement, Mr. President, uh, for the approval of the budget of the judiciary with the...
uh, other with the other requirement that they be given an increase during the plenary, uh, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po, Justice Maidas and all the justices present. Uh, uh -huh. At mar maraming salamat din po, uh, Mr. Senator Francis Tolentino. Thank you, uh, Senator Francis. I thought you were going to ask for a reconsideration of your uh, bar exam, which you took uh, several years ago. Uh, may statute of limitations na yata yun, sir. Uh, I'm just kidding. Sir, thank you very much for your support and uh, uh, you've been consistent uh, since you've joined this chamber and uh, that's most welcome as a member of the bar, as the member of uh, uh, the chamber. I'm sure that is most welcome to our resource persons. Thank you, sir. And uh, there is a motion. Uh, the chair uh, has no issues with the judiciary and in fact would like to reiterate his continuing support for all the courts and uh, for the increase in the budget, which uh, we will do at the appropriate time. Uh, not only, as mentioned by Senator Tolentino, to comply with the Constitution, but also to uh, give real power and, and empower the courts, which are, uh, as mentioned by uh, Justice Miranda, a co-equal branch uh, of government to the legis legislative as well as the executive. So without further ado, there is a motion, uh, hearing no objection, the motion is uh, approved and the budget of the judiciary, the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals, the Sandigan Bayan, the Presidential Electoral Tribunal, and the Court of Tax Appeals and other courts is uh, approved at the committee level and will be favorably recommended to plenary for plenary debate. Thank you very much uh, to our distinguished uh, guests. Uh, to our Supreme yeah. Court Justices, Justice Lopez, Justice Salameda, of course, our uh, constant uh, companion during budget debates, uh, very diligent court administrator, uh, Justice Maidas, uh, Deputy Court Administrator Villanueva, Thank you. Basketball natin, <laughs> uh, to the Court of Appeals, uh, presiding Justice Salazar Fernando, Justice Sorongon, Sandigan Bayan, presiding Justice Kabotahitang, uh, Justice Miranda, to uh, Court of Tax Appeals, uh, Presiding Justice uh, Del Rosario, and to all the branches, the lower courts, uh, appellate courts, thank you for your, we know you've suffered a lot of casualties. Hindi masyado nabanggit dito, pero napakaraming empleyado po ng korte ang tinamaan po ng COVID uh, while uh, doing their job. No? So we thank them and uh, we pray for them for the continuing success of uh, the judiciary that they may give justice to the Filipinos. So maraming salamat po sa inyo, sa inyong serbisyo. Your maraming honor. salamat din po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Sani Angara, and of course to Senator Ra Francis Tolentino. Maraming maraming salamat po. You're most welcome, ho. Your Honors. Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe po. Ingat po sila. Thank you. Thank you.